Seeing the uh, governor here reminded me about one time when I was here in New York, and I was the Secretary of Transportation at that point, and my motorcade uh, was heading down Fifth Avenue during rush hour. Uh, some of the streets were blocked off by the police escort, and I hate to admit it, but it did cause quite a traffic backup. Uh, traffic admittedly was a mess. And I vowed on that day that I would come back and make things right. So today, folks, I'm happy to say that I've paid back my debt to the Big Apple. Instead of coming here uh, in a motorcade with a police escort, you'll be relieved to know that I walked. <laughs> but where some people see a dead end, others see opportunity. And what may be bad news for train supporters in Wisconsin, Ohio, and New Jersey could be good news for commuters in California, Florida, and here in the Northeast, and especially with Governor Patterson here in the state of New York. Because the $180 million from Wisconsin, the $400 million from Ohio, and the $3 billion from New Jersey will come back to Washington, D.C. and be reallocated and awarded to states, to other states instead. In the meantime, I urge everyone to come together to make high-speed rail a reality. History has shown what can happen when people band together in the face of insurmountable odds. And it hit home earlier to me, earlier this week, or this uh, year rather, on a flight to California. I read something interesting in the LA Times about the Railroad Museum in Sacramento, California. And this exhibit is celebrating the role that President Abraham Lincoln had in terms of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, which united and transformed this great nation. May, many naysayers said it couldn't happen, that it couldn't be done, that the building of a railroad thousands of miles over rough terrain, including the Sierra Nevada mountains, was a pipe dream but it was indeed completed in seven years. And it is also fitting in an era of highway and airport congestion that we once again make passenger rail an important part of our national transportation strategy. All around the country, people are asking for more rail service ridership on Amtrak, light rail, commuter rail, and subways is on the increase. And across Europe and Asia, people already enjoy the comfort and the convenience of high-speed train travel. And that's why it is so important for us to jumpstart a new era in American train travel. And it starts right here, right now. And I'm here to personally ask all of you, cajole you, kick you, whatever has to be done to be the catalyst to make it happen. Work with me and with each other to be the springboard that finally makes high-speed rail come true. I firmly believe that there is a viable future for high-speed rail. If the, if the system is affordable and tailored to customer needs, people will use it. This is as true of air travel and car travel 
as it is for rail. However, just as it was for the interstate highway system, it took 50 years to complete it. And the true potential of a fully integrated, high-speed, inner-city passenger rail network will not come overnight. Now, these projects will grow our economy, create jobs, relieve congestion, improve the environment, increase investments, and lessen our dependence on foreign oil. Now, isn't that exactly what this great nation needs right now? So let me wrap it up with this. To those naysayers who doubt high-speed rail will ever come, think back to what I said earlier about President Lincoln. It can be done. I can say with good certain that the year ahead will be the defining uh, one for transportation.